Naming spreads can certainly seem difficult and somewhat complex, especially when you start encountering some of the difficultly worded questions you might encounter on the actual test. Good news, we will cover everything you need to know in this video, and that will include identifying a spread and then naming it based upon its primary components. Let's go ahead and get started. First, to name a spread, we need to know, generally speaking, what it is. A spread is simply when an investor combines a long call with a short call, that's a call spread, or a long put with a short put, that is a put spread. This will feel a little bit different than straddles where we see the same strike price and expiration on both sides. With spreads, either the expiration or the strike price, or maybe even both will be different. It's where the differences are that will first determine what type of spread we're dealing with. We refer to these as spread classifications. The first one we'll look at has three names. We call this a horizontal, also known as a calendar, also known as a time spread. Now, if you think about the term spread, spread typically makes a reference to difference. So when we say calendar or time spread, that should be a signal to you that the differences will be with the expirations. That's where the time is brought into play. With that being said, a horizontal calendar, aka time spread, is when we have the same strike price across both legs, but different expirations. An example of this would be a long Jan 50 call and a short February 50 call. The next classification has two names. We call this a vertical, also known as a price spread. As the term price spread might indicate, we're going to see a difference between the strike prices in this example. To be specific, a vertical, also known as a price spread, is where we see the same expirations across both options, but different strike prices. For example, a long Jan 50 call in a short Jan 60 call. Most of your spread questions on the exam will actually be vertical, AKA price spreads. So get used to these, you're gonna see a lot of them. The last spread classification is a combination of the two. We simply call this a diagonal spread. This involves a spread where we have a difference on both sides different strike prices and different expirations. An example of this would be a long Jan 50 call and a short February 60 call. You might be wondering where the terms horizontal, vertical, and diagonal come from, and this is in reference to a chart. If you look at any stock chart, you'll see prices on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Now that we have the classifications out of the way, let's talk about how one would name a spread. Now, naming a spread is always in reference to its dominant side. Every spread has two different parts, right? Call spread, we have a long call, short call, Put spread, we have a long put, short put. One of those sides will always be considered the dominant side over the other. The dominant side is the side the investor cares most about, typically because it's tied to them making money. As you progress further through the achievable material, you'll learn more about how to approach these questions from a strategic and math-based perspective. And in those videos, you should understand why there is a dominant side over the other. But for right now, we just need to identify the dominant side so that we can appropriately name the spread. Now, the first way to do it is super simple. If they happen to give you premiums on both option legs, then all you need to do is identify which option has the higher premium, and that is your dominant side. For example, let's say that we have a long Jan 50 call at nine and a short Jan 60 call at three. This one is super simple. We just identify which leg has the higher premium, which obviously would be the long call. With this knowledge, we can now establish three names for this spread, all of which will go back to the long side of the strategy, given that it's the dominant side. We would call this a long call spread because the long call portion of it is the dominant side. We would also call this a debit call spread. You'll want to associate the term long and debit together with options. Debit just means more money is leaving your pocket than coming in. And when you think about the numbers here, if you're buying something for nine and selling another thing for three, that is the net $6 leaving your pocket, which is why we would call this a debit call spread. The last name is a bull call spread. We would call this a bull call spread because the dominant side is bullish. Long calls are bullish, so this is a bullish strategy overall. You might be confused with that point. 
you might be thinking, hey, long calls are bullish, but aren't short calls bearish? That is true, but the way these are set up is that this is overall a bullish strategy, even though there is a bearish component to it. You will learn more about the why behind these strategies being bullish or bearish as you go further through the achievable materials. I wish I could tell you it was that easy every time to name a spread. The reality is that the test writers know this trick and know that it's pretty simple for people to answer these questions when premiums are provided. So typically they don't give premiums. But good news, I'm gonna show you how to name a spread even without the premiums. If it's a price spread they give you. Now as a reminder, a price spread, also known as a vertical spread, is where we see a difference in the strike prices but the same expiration. There's two general rules of thumb depending on if you have a call spread or a put spread. And yes, you'll probably need to make some room in your head to remember this. With call spreads, the side that has the lower strike price is the dominant side. For put spreads, the side that has the higher strike price is the dominant side. You might be picking up on this, but when we say dominant side, a lot of times we're referring to the more valuable option. And if you think about how calls and puts work, those ranges I just gave you should make sense. The lower the strike price in a call, the more valuable that call. And to demonstrate that, we'll compare a 30 call to a 40 call. Doesn't even matter what side we're on, whether we're long or short, let's just think of it as a contract. The 30 call gives someone the right to buy for 30. The 40 call gives someone the right to buy for 40. Between the two, what is a more valuable contract? The 30 call is, because it allows whoever buys it to buy at a lower price. And if you flip it upside down with puts, it should also make sense. If we were comparing two put contracts, say a 20 put and a 30 put, the 30 put would be more valuable because it gives someone the right to sell at 30, whereas the 20 put only gives the right to sell for 20. If that makes sense, awesome. If it doesn't make sense, just assume call spreads, the one with the lower strike price is the dominant side. With put spreads, the one with the higher strike price is the dominant side. Let's look at a quick example and assume that we have a long September 30 put and a short September 45 put. Of course, this is a price spread, same expirations, different strike prices. Based upon what we just discussed with put spreads, we know the side with the higher strike price will be our dominant side, which makes the short side our dominant side. Now, with that being said, we'll go ahead and name the spread. This would be considered a short put spread because the short side is dominant. This would also be considered a credit put spread. You want to associate the term credit with the term short, credit just means more money is coming into your pocket. Remember when we're talking about the different sides of the spread, there's one side that's more valuable than the other. And if we're selling the more valuable one and buying the less valuable one, that will be a net credit more money coming into our pocket than leaving our pocket. This is also known as a bull put spread simply because short puts are bullish. Now the last type of spread you can be asked to name would be potentially for a horizontal time or calendar spread. Those all mean the same thing. And if you recall, horizontal time or calendar spread is one where we have the same strike prices but different expirations. The time is where the difference is. Let's assume we have a long May 70 call and a short June 70 call. Sure enough, this is a calendar spread. Same strike price, but different expirations. The way we determine what side is dominant with a calendar spread is by determining what option will last longer. Whatever option lasts longer is our dominant side every time. We have May and we have June in front of us. Don't overcomplicate this. Some of you might be thinking, well, you know, they didn't give us years. Is this like June 2023 and May 2024? Or like, what's going on here? Go in order. This is May and June of the same year. Keep it simple and assume that these are basically back to back. There's no way this could be June 2023 and May 2024, given the fact that most options are nine months or less. Unless we see the term leap, assume that option is not gonna be longer than nine months, there's no way that we could have an option that expires in June 2023 and another option that expires in May 2024 at the same time. So bottom line, we'll keep this real simple. June comes after May, and therefore the June option will be the more valuable of the two. So our short call is our dominant side. And with that being said, we can now name the spread. This is a short call spread because the short call is the dominant side, simple. We always associate the term credit with short. So this is a credit call spread as well. It's a credit call spread because we're selling the more valuable option and buying the less valuable option. Keep in mind, all of this goes back to time value. An option that lasts one month longer than another is more valuable. 
possible, no doubt. The last name of this spread is that this is a bear call spread. And this is the case because short calls are bearish strategies. Now that we've established the fundamentals of naming a spread, let's look at a practice question together and see if we understand the concept. It's up there on the board. If you want to pause the video, see if you can answer it on your own. And when you hit play, we will break it down together. Okay, let's look at the question. In an account, an investor is long one MU October 55 call when the market is at 56. They want to create a bull call spread. Which of the following options should you recommend? The first thing to point out is that the question establishes the market price uh, when the long call was established. That again is just irrelevant information. Like we've said in previous videos, nine times out of 10, when they give you the market price, when a option is established, it's almost always irrelevant and unimportant. And that certainly is the case here. The first thing we need to do is take a look at the answers because this is not an essay test that we're taking. We're not gonna fill out, oh, it's gotta be this type of option. We're gonna have to go with the answer that gives us a bull call spread here. And if you know anything about spreads, you can eliminate two of the answers right away. Forget the bull part of it. A call spread is when we're long a call and short a call at the same time. Two of the answers below are long puts. Long puts are not involved in call spreads. So we can automatically, without even thinking about it, eliminate those two answers. Now with the remaining two that we have, they're both short calls, pretty much exactly the same, except for the strike price. One is a 35 strike price, one is a $75 strike price. Doesn't really matter what answer we go with, we're gonna be creating some form of a price spread here. The option leg and the prompt and the two and the answers are all October options. So we know we don't even need to look at the expiration to find the answer here. That is something that we don't care about. As we discussed previously, price, AKA vertical spreads, we can determine the dominant side based upon the strike price. With call spreads, the side that has the lower strike price between the two will be the dominant side. Now we're looking to create a bull call spread, which is another way of saying, we want the bullish side of this spread to be the dominant side. Long calls are bullish, so we need the long call to have the lower strike price of the two sides. If you can get that far, you've got the answer. If we pair the long call with the short 75 call, the long call will be the dominant side because it has the lower strike price between the two legs. We can even take it a step further. This is not only a bull call spread, but it's also a long call spread and also known as a debit call spread. Naming spreads can certainly be a difficult task, but if you use the resources and the knowledge we discussed in this video, you should hopefully be able to consistently get these questions correct. Hi, I'm Brandon. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll love the courses I authored with Achievable. They include tons of real world examples, more videos just like these on dozens of key topics, a built-in study planner, hundreds of chapter review questions, and unlimited practice exams. Our courses are competitively priced and you can try them out for free first to see if our style is the right fit for you. Follow the links below in the description to get started.